12 AU outer boundary is at 1200 AU, our spacing is exponential. And this, this is the region. So every, ev this is the patch, the patches. Every patch is assigned to an MPI task. So typical run at this resolution is 512 to 1024 MPI tasks, so 32 to 64 nodes with two uh, OpenMP threads. Found, found that to be optimal for the problem. Um, you use more MPI tasks for that resolution. It is not, uh, it does not help. More MPI tasks would be helpful at higher resolution, but had to make a, a trade-off here with 50,000 hours and 50,000 node hours. The fellows get, we don't get the millions of hours you PRAC people get. So I had, had to make a trade-off. Do I do many small runs to explore the parameter space and try different things, or do I do a few things at high resolution? And I use the entire node hour, 50,000 node hour allocation doing that. So I think that was the right choice. So there were there was a lot of development and there were some, uh, some dead ends, some things that just resulted in non nonsense solutions. So if I did higher resolution, uh, use more node hours at a time, that would have wasted more time on the things that didn't work. So I think this, this, was, this was a good strategy. <coughs> now let's see, we got some, some videos, not as many as Ed. So you have the, uh, the pickup ion uh, pressure here in the case that pickup ions are created in the helio sheath and using the uh, isentropic boundary condition. And on the right there is the uh, magnetic field magnitude here. Um, I'm told that this uh, two lobe structure is an artifact of using a unipolar field. did not have a current current sheet in here. You, including the current sheet actually uh, makes a, a different kind of artifact appear where the current sheet curls up and goes against the uh, heliopause. I guess the good thing, the proper thing to do would be to use uh, time-dependent boundary conditions and actually include the solar cycle, but that would take even more, uh, even more time. So unipolar, unipolar magnetic field is, is the way to go for this. Now the effects of the source terms, um, is it the same same simulation depending on whether the source terms are uh, add pickup ions or remove pickup ions? We see unsurprisingly if you add, add them then it inflates the uh, helo sheath. That's on, on, the, on the left. Now some other simulations have, have shown that the width of the helio sheath and the Voyager direction, which the Voyager 1, for those who don't know, the Voyager 1 is, is around here, Voyager 2 is somewhere down here. Well, yeah. <coughs> other, some other simulations, someone else did, show that that changes, this difference changes by, by uh, a 10 to 20 AU. Uh, my simulation did not show that. It's only you know, 1 or 2 AU in the Voyager direction, but it, it can be significant in, in the tail. It's just too compressed toward the nose for that to make much difference. And notice how, even though, so here, even though pickup ions are being taken out, they only disappear. They are not created in region 2. There's still enough of them that convect outwards. Have a significant effect. And that, that's actually most of the, uh, most of the pressure. The, the <coughs> majority, they form the majority of the pressure here. <coughs> and effects of the, the boundary conditions. Want to recreate that, uh, wanted to recreate the uh, Voyager 2 obs observations that the solar wind is super fast magnetosonic past the termination shot. And it turns out that only the, the uh, isentropic boundary conditions, where you essentially say that about fiat, have those. These other, other uh, boundary conditions did not recreate that, so there was, that was disappointing. But you do see that pickup ions are necessary because this is the simulation without pickup ions, and it is and no, nowhere near, because the average you know, fast magnetic sonic velocity measured was something uh, around here and then down here. And also, you see that dif different uh, boundary conditions change where the termination shock is, so that, that's also interesting. But as you, as you see, that they do not change, depending on where their pickup ions are created orders toward, that does not change the location of the termination shock that much, just like an AU. <coughs> and yes, here's that artifact I was talking about with the 
current sheet. We don't like that. That doesn't actually happen. But so now this, yeah, so I mean, this does happen, but that does not. Anyway, so that that is what I have. I guess there's plenty of time for questions. Yes. Okay. Oh, a few minutes for questions. In fact, we have, we have a significant amount of time, but our fourth speaker for this session, I, I think, had to cancel. Uh, so. Yes. So you said that opening the two was the best. Uh, yes, because uh, OpenMP is u used for the patches, and I think those patches were 16 by 16 by 16. Yes, so having many more OpenMP threads for that, for only, uh, what is that, 4.96? That's, that's just more, too much overhead compared to the amount of benefit you get. So I, tr I did try other, other values in that, and two had the smallest time step. Like smallest time per time step. Other questions? I have a question. Uh, if allocation was no limit, what kind of resolution and therefore scale would you be attempting? If allocation were no limit, I would use AMR, many AMR levels. So the same, so probably the same base grid, but several AMR levels. I'd pass that. Looking at you. So maybe I missed it. So you're using the finite volume? Yes, we're using a finite volume method. It's second order in space and time. Do you, you have any kind of shot capturing method employed? Like a flux reconstruction? Oh, man. I don't recall those, those kind, kinds of details at the moment. I did not design the volume, finite volume solver. Okay, any other questions? Thank our speaker again.